new article coming out of the hedge talking about most vaccinated nation on earth cancels christmas over a covert surge in cases like much of europe recently gibraltar the british overseas territory located at the southern tip of the iberian peninsula has seen a sudden uptick in covid cases the european case rate right the seven day average is now higher than the peak of Mar of the march wave it goes on to state and Gibraltar cases are soaring exponentially, as according to the government. When I looked at this, this does not look natural when you see these spikes like this, because this is not what respiratory illnesses look like. Respiratory illnesses, you look at any chart prior to 2020, and you'll see what looks more like a steady up climb, uh, uptick. And then eventually, they kind of fall back down very slowly. <clears throat> this might be like, <clears throat> Excuse me. An error in reporting. It just looks so odd seeing this uptick. But you know what looks like that? A dirty bomb. A biological weapon. This is what a biological weapon looked like. This is what. This is what. Like when you saw. I did a video a while ago. And I showed the. Um, I showed what Ebola looked like. And this is what Ebola looked like. Ebola is straight up and straight down. And typically you see that in diseases that they kind of hit the community, it wipes out everything it touches, and it just disappears. But COVID isn't like that. COVID is a very slow respiratory illness that takes sometimes even months. Like, for example, in Florida, I did a video a while back where the Surgeon General, when they were talking about the numbers, that the average COVID death was around six months. That the person, by the time that they came into the hospital until the time period that the person died was about six months. And they were like, that's not, that's not COVID. That's not related to COVID coming in and just basically wiping the person out and taking their life. This is what, this is more like a biological weapon where it goes in, it affects every, whoever it, it comes in contact with, it immediately kills. And then you see this. And this is very odd. Of course, flu cases have also disappeared. I haven't seen a flu case uh, this year so far, man, everybody's messaging me this morning. <clears throat> I haven't seen a flu case so far uh, in the in the country so far. And you can look, you look at that on the CDC. The CDC tracks uh, flu cases. Flu has literally been eradicated uh, for the better part of going on two years now. And the article goes on to state, in response to the surge in COVID cases, the government of Gibraltar recently announced that the official Christmas parties, official receptions, and similar gatherings have been canceled and advised the public to avoid social events and parties for the next four weeks. Outdoor spaces are recommended over indoor ones uh, for obvious reasons. Touching and hugging is discouraged and mask wearing is advised. The drastic increase in the number of people testing positive for C-19 in recent, uh, in recent days is a stark reminder that the virus is still prevalent in our community and that it is responsible, uh, it, is, it is our responsibility the responsibility of us all to take every re uh, reasonable precaution to protect ourselves and our loved ones. And it says the problem is, is there's just one problem. Gibraltar is the most vaccinated nation on earth, as you can see here, having uh, vaccinated over 100% of their population. In fact, over 118% of Gibraltar's population are fully vaccinated against COVID. And the reason being that it's above 100 is due to Spaniards who come across the border and work and visit the territory every day. So they've not only have they vaccinated their entire population, they've also vaccinated uh, the workers that come in from other countries, from neighboring uh, Spain. And it just goes to show you that the, the narrative that the reason healthcare workers like myself need to take this particular uh, medication is so that we don't spread the disease and as you can see in the most and the most highly vaccinated nations here uh, these these countries are typically like for example i talked about chile i talked about singapore we touched on portugal and of course now we're talking about gibraltar and all of these places have very high vaccination rates and you know what they also have in common they also have COVID outbreaks and that's why i said like when you look at israel that is highly vaccinated with a lot of cases and then you look at the neighboring nation right next to it palestine 
you don't see COVID cases. You know what they also don't have? They also don't have vaccination rates in, in Palestine because they didn't go out there and mass vaccinate their people. And it's like I said before, wherever the vaccine goes, so do the cases. The cases follow. That's why in every, even in, even in America, the top five most vaccinated states also have COVID outbreaks. And the, the narrative that if you don't take the vaccine, well, then you're spreading the disease, right? Israel Israel doesn't have an unvaccinated population to be like, you're, you know, we're a pandemic of the unvaccinated. You know what they have over there? They have the pandemic of the double jabbed. And once they move over to uh, their fourth dose, they'll have the pandemic of the triple jabbed. And it's like I said, this isn't going to go away by protesting. In my opinion, this feels more like America America uses the dollar. The dollar doesn't mean anything. You've seen the way they, they print the dollar. It doesn't mean anything. The dollar is only backed by people's compliance. And of course, military and bombs and missiles. It's the only thing that backs the dollar. It's not backed by anything of value. It's just backed by force. And so to me, that's why you look and many of these other countries like America has tried to give other nations their vaccine, very similarly to how they give the dollar away. The reason why they give the dollar away is so that the dollar continues to be circulated and it gives them authority because now that region values the dollar. And so it gain, it's, in, it's in essence a way for them to spread their empire, so to speak, right? It's how they're able to spread their empire. And of course, you see places like in Russia and in China that are using the dollar less and less so that they're challenging it as the reserved currency. And what this allows them to do is it allows them to trade either in their own currency or their trade for goods or for services. And of course, America, seeing what was happening in the world, in my opinion, released the virus for the purpose of releasing the vaccine, for the purpose of keeping and expanding their authority in nations. That's why when you look at the G7 or now the G10, most of these countries are uh, basically all within the same league of individuals of power. They're all backed by, in essence, the same entities, the, federal, the uh, central banks. And what we're seeing is, is you're seeing uh, power shift in countries people are basically challenging the status quo namely china and of course america we look at china 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 as our arch enemy while literally ignoring uh the people in our own you know the, the government and other entities within our own nation that are working against us and in my opinion that's why i say when when you look at places like singapore and chile people imagine if we only just if we just get if we just give it to everybody you know we're going to get past this and it has nothing to do with getting past it it has everything to do with control because you don't see the outcome like i said as a nurse uh, you know we're responsible when you when you put in place an intervention whatever that intervention might be whether it's an antibiotic whether it's wound care or another type of medication you then evaluate the outcome to see if you got what the outcome that you wanted which was the person gets healed or that the person gets better or that the fever goes down right if you give tylenol and then the fever doesn't go down you don't you don't just walk away and just oh, we're just gonna keep giving tylenol until the fever goes away no you try something different maybe you use a whole uh, uh a cold pack maybe you use some ice maybe you just make sure that patient doesn't have too much uh, clothing on so that they're not uh you know too warm etc there's different things. Maybe you change up the antibiotic. There's different interventions when you don't get the outcome that you want. And so to sit here and be like, well, the, the, you know, the only thing that we have to do is just keep on injecting people until this works. It's like it doesn't even make sense from a medical standpoint. But this is this is basically where we're at. One other thing that I did want to touch on, which is one of the reasons what you're one of the things that you're seeing moving forward. And this is happening primarily in the West. It says Germany to follow Austria's lockdown apartheid. Berlin considers new COVID restrictions for 14 million unvaccinated citizens after Vienna banned those without jabs from leaving their homes. And this is why I say that you have to treat these people accordingly. These are not these people do not have your benefit in mind. And so when when they use force against you, I mean, there's other videos. Um, I don't know if I'll come across it. Come across it where 
You see uh, police going around, checking people's papers, making sure you're not outside. And that's why I say, in my opinion, I'm against the police in every way, shape, or form. In my opinion, we have a Second Amendment for a reason. And you are responsible for protecting yourself and for protecting your family and for and for protecting those you know in your community. And if we all learned how to, in essence, police ourselves, well, then you don't need to have police in your neighborhood. Police own, police work for the government. Just like if you watch Game of Thrones, the, the soldiers, they worked for the king. Even though that maybe they protected the citizens when, you know, when the kingdom was under attack. But when push comes to shove, when the king said, go out there and slay these people, they would. They, it, 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 at the end of the day, they're just hired men and, of course, women. And so when push comes to shove, when it comes to violating your civil liberties, when it comes to violating your rights as a human being, these police officers and military personnel will do it. And at the end of the day, they'll just say, I'm, this is, you know, it's just my job. I'm just following orders. And that's why I say if you and this is the whole point of getting people to give up their guns like they did in Australia. And they were like, you don't need guns. We've got the police and we've got the military to protect you. And now you see what is going on there. And this is why I'm 100 percent in agreement with defunding the police because we can use that money to go into a different direction now of course a society like that will be a bit more dangerous in the immediate but in the long run where people realize that there's mutual destruction you see that people aren't going willing to go in essence to war with each other because they know the outcome the outcome it will be loss of life very much why you don't see wars like you do right you don't see america going to war with russia or going to war with china why because of mutual destruction america will go to war with these backward nations that they can kind of bully around and that's why they feel strong about going into afghanistan but when russia or when china pushes back they want to be diplomatic and that's the point is that at the end of the day if the common citizen held weapons in their own hands you'd see eventually you would see uh less robbing less murders because people realize at the end of the day that that other person has a gun and i'm i'm likely to lose my life if i act out of line in a way that that person feels threatened that's why you really don't see these sort of killings in play in rural areas like in texas uh, because the people have guns and everybody kind of gets along with each other because they have to one way or another and so it's the same way that countries work but within the country all police serve to do is to exercise authority over people who don't have guns or people who refuse to exercise uh, their second amendment and this is why i wholeheartedly agree with and am in agreement with defunding the police at the end of the day like i said when push comes to shove it's not a politician that is going to tell you to stay home. It's not a politician that is going to make sure you don't walk out of your home. It's not a politician that's going to stop you from going into the supermarket without a mask. It's going to be a police officer at the end of the day. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. Feel free, of course, to like, comment, and subscribe. Give me your opinion. I would love to hear it, and I'll check you out next time. Thanks for watching. Take care, and God bless.